So the uh, today we're also gonna do the review for exam one, but uh, mostly today we're gonna talk about something is the kind of non-mathematical problem. So uh, on your exam, I'll probably give you some uh, chemical formula that looks like this. Uh, yeah. Well, they're the good ones too. Okay. Just try to do. Yeah, so what's the name of this one? Uh, uh, first of all, you need to find out uh, this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> ionic compound. Because the sodium is metal, right? It's metal. And uh, chlorine is not metal because it's on the right side. So it's a uh, metal uh, cation plus uh, an, uh, like a non metal anion. It makes the ionic compound. So you have uh, this one. So in this case, if it's ionic compound, which is metal cation, uh, non-metal anion combination, ionic bond, and ionic compound, we just copy the same name you see on the periodic table, which is sodium. And for the later one, it just changed the last part as IDE. So this is why it's sodium chloride. Okay. So if I give you this question here, find the right chemical name for this compound, you need to choose the one that says sodium chloride. Okay. Sodium chloride. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's what we answer. Okay. So maybe I'll I'll choose you with a lot of different names like sodium chlorine, which is close but not correct. Okay. Well, I can say switch the position here. Maybe I can say chlorine sodide or something uh, but you need to choose that this is sodium chloride because uh, sodium is the one you see on the left side so it has to come first and the chlorine is on the right side so always from left to the right makes sense right so maybe what's the name of this one so sodium this is a fluorine so be sodium this will be sodium perfect. You got it. Uh, yeah, fluoride. Okay. So perfect. How about let's try to do something different, okay? <laughs> so this is a magnesium this is in group two uh, which means it's in second column okay. okay this is in group two so uh, this will tend to be plus two charge when it's ionized because it's group two that's why there has to be two bromines because uh, each bromine will be negatively charged. Uh, because if you look at the bromine in the periodic table, it's the second last column. Uh, so that is group 7. The last one is group 8. We call this normal gas. And this is what we call halogen. Halogens. Uh, meaning they just become a, uh, an ion, which is negatively charged ion, and it's ionized. But it's only negative one. Um, so to make this neutral, there has to be two bromines anion part with coming in to interact only one magnesium cation. So that makes your chemical formula not just MgBr but MgBr2. Okay. So that is why uh, we put it in this way in the chemical formula. But still, name will be the same. Magnesium bromine will be bromide. Name is just the same, same format. Magnesium bromide. Because the when you look at this uh, chemical formula, and also you can find it on the periodic table, you know which one will carry what charge. This is a plus two, negative one. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be like dibromide? Oh, is that a per thing? perfect. So there was a. So this is for ionic compound. 
Uh, so we do that for molecular compound, right? Molecular compound. So for ionic compounds, you don't have to do magnesium bromide. And why wouldn't do dibromide, right? Uh, because the if you look at this in the periodic table, this is group seven. This is group two. So we know this will be two plus, this will be negative one, okay? Then if you just say magnesium bromide, people will know it automatically there'll be two anyway. Because it's, it's, it says there. So I'm, I'm ionic compound wise, you don't have to worry about numbering those two elements in the composition. Does it make it wrong? No, no. If you say magnesium bromide, that's the only way you can call it. Uh, you may call this magnesium dibromide, but people wonder why. Because they wouldn't know anyway there'll be two. Because the charge should be neutral, one and two. So yeah, I think this is the only way you can call this. But you have a very good question, because the, whenever you do molecular compounds, uh, for example, if you have a, this one, you have to number them. Because the, if you look at the first one over here, nitrogen is no metal. Uh, so they, they will not carry the charge. So the chemical bond they do here is different from here. Uh, that's why uh, now they're not using any like formal charge to be making up what the bonds are in this uh, chemical formula, but just the molecular bonding. So for this molecular compounds, you have to uh, number these two. So this is the same nitrogen, okay? And this is oxygen, but I'm gonna put IDs oxide. And then only thing you have to do additionally to this one, then this one, because this is just done. But this is a tri nitrogen. Uh, this is a pentoxide. Uh, because the pen means the five. So uh, the things you have to know for this type of uh, exam problem, uh, the mono is one, di means two, tri is three, uh, tetra is four, pent or penta is five, hex or hexa is six, and hept, opt, opta, hepta, nona, nona, and pika. Uh, this is the numbering uh, for the molecular compound, but usually uh, this is good enough, like two six is the mostly common uh, use for uh, making sure how many each element you have in this uh, compound. There will be tri, uh, nitrogen, uh, tri nitrogen pentoxide. So I'll give you one example here again. You can try this one. Okay. You try the phosphorus oxygen. Okay. Put ID at the end and try to number them too using this one. You have the, this one over here, right? So if you keep doing this, it will be actually quite easier when you practice more. Okay. <clears throat> okay, what's the answer? It will be tetra phosphorus, perfect, and hexa oxide, perfect. There you go. Well, so mm -hmm. we'll always have ID, ID on the ID. On yes, the always ID in the molecular compounds and the ion compounds. Yes, perfect. Oh, okay. That's great. So uh, I never seen anyone using this full, just whole name as in the last part. It always going to be ID for the molecular and ion compound. So if you say uh, tetra phosphorus and hexa oxygen, will be very diff very weird name. <laughs> I never yeah never yeah heard and even read before. So the uh, okay if then it's the case, uh, we can try this one here. CCL4, so it's a carbon and uh, chlorine, right? carbon and chlorine. 
I think you you might have to memorize this one, yes. It's a mono di tri tetra penta hexa hepta hepta no la uh, you have a like yeah. Up to ten is enough. You have a more than ten, like uh, you know, I could send dodecan, undecan, I could send um, Icosan and uh, Icosan, uh, like all the Tricosan, Tetricos. Uh, but you don't have to know. Uh, but on T10, yeah, this would be really useful if you just remember. So it would be, it'll be what? Mono. Monocarbon, tetrachloride. Perfect. That's good. Uh, just one more thing. I give you this uh, example here today because the, uh, if you have a mono, uh, you don't have to say it. Uh, it's, it is okay to say carbon. Tetrachloride, people understand we just one carbon. A mono is usually just ignored uh, in chemistry, uh, right? Uh, but if you want to specify, if you want to make sure there's only one carbon, you can definitely say monocarbon tetrachloride. But if you just say carbon tetrachloride, that would be just fine. Make sense, right? Okay, perfect. All right, that's good. All right, so that was for the ion compounds and the molecular compounds. Only difference is they use the all IV and same, but you have to name it here. Uh, there are a couple things you need to know additionally to the ion compound. Is whenever you use the transition metal. So transition metal here is once again, you have uh, two columns, right? Okay. If you have a periodic table here, it's right there. It's so what we call B-block. Oh, we, we'll talk about this one when we touch the, uh, the electric configuration form. Uh, but this is what we call the elements in the D-block. Uh, this is where we can find the transition metal. Uh, so for example, if I give you CuCl2, okay? So this is copper and the chlorine, okay? We have a copper and chlorine here. So if you just write copper chloride, okay, which is what we did for ion compound, which is these all ion compound, this copper is a transition metal. So this is a metal cation for sure. This is the anion, so this is an anion, no metal anion. So it is also ion compound. So if you write this one, you only like 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 eighty percent right. Uh, what you need to do additionally for the ones in the D block, uh, you need to do the charge of that copper in Newman, uh, Newman number, Roman number. So the copper two chloride. Uh, the, the reason why we put the numbers in uh, Roman uh, in parentheses, because the copper can be, e go ahead, yeah. I didn't know that's copper two. Oh, because the, your anion. Okay. Uh, so the chlorine has a negative one, right? But there's two. So you know to this one to be neutral, that should be two plus there. That's a very good question. So if you look at the uh, <coughs> chemical formula, you can actually estimate, oh, this must have a two plus charge. Because this one, each will have a negative one, the there is a two, so it'll be two plus charge. That's why we're gonna put two charge. And now you wonder, then why we need to put two there? People will know there'll be two because we have a, another case this way. We also can have copper chloride in this way and this way. So if you just think copper chloride, people will not know either this one or this one. Uh, so whenever you do that with the transition metal with the number, uh, Roman number here, because the uh, the weirdly, uh, the metals in the, the deep box, they don't have only one form of charge. It could be one plus, two plus, they, or three plus. They can go either way. That's why, in this case, we have to be very specific for charge. 
because uh, unlike because uh, group one, okay, once again, group one is always plus one. There's no case you can go either plus two, plus three. No, group one always group uh, plus one. Group two same. They can always do plus two. They cannot do plus one or plus three. But the one in the transition metal, they can do several cases. They can do either plus one, plus two, plus three sometimes. So you need to be very specific. Okay. That's why we're putting this one. So for example, if I give you these two, the name will be what? Iron three chloride. Perfect. This will be iron two. Perfect. Yeah. So this is why you just can't say iron chloride because you need to know which one of them by saying iron chloride. Then you can say, oh, this is iron three, this is iron two chloride. So that's the exception. Uh, whenever you have an ionic compound, but the metal cation is in the one in the D block, you need to specify the numbers of it by looking at the formula. It's three or two, that has to be what? The plus three plus two, okay? <clears throat> so let's try this one. Uh, let's try uh, that's one. Okay, cobalt. Let's try to cobalt. Okay. Let's try to cobalt here. What might be the name of this one, real quick? Just one minute. Okay. <clears throat> so this is uh, it. Literally, what you're gonna see on the exam. I'll give you the chemical formula, and you need to find out the what's the uh, name of that. There will be cobalt two chloride. Perfect. So. If I change this one to this one, it will be cobalt three. So, uh, but make sure you guys put the, not this, but this, okay? It has to be in this way, okay? okay. okay. Make sure you guys do this. Uh, this is a really good way to distinguish. So I think we're good now for ionic compounds and molecular compounds. Uh, but as you uh, remember, or as you know, already, the most typical part of the nomenclature is an acid. Uh, so you have a acid one. Do you guys remember what this is, right? Uh, this is any any compound that donates hydrogen cation. Okay, you can say hydrogen cation which means it's positively charged or you can say proton either way is fine uh, because the uh, if you look at the hydrogen uh, it's atomic number one meaning it has one proton so if you look at the nucleus of the hydrogen it's just one proton there because the atomic mass of the hydrogen is also one uh, so there will be no neutron there will be no neutron but just one proton uh, and there's one electron at, uh, or, uh, just moving around one proton, that's hydrogen. Uh, but hydrogen cation means what? It's positively charged, meaning it has lost uh, one electron. So there's only, uh, only one proton there. So there's one proton, one electron, that makes hydrogen, but you lost now, so it becomes this one, then you, this is the same as just one proton. So the, the acid simply means any compound that donates this uh, proton, or you can say hydrogen cation, that's the acid. Uh, okay. So if you have uh, this one, uh, you can have uh, two types of acid nomenclature. Okay? The first one is binary. Binary acid. The so binary acid means just the one hydrogen and one the other element, that's it. Uh, like for example, you can say HCl, HBr, HI, okay? So this is a hydrogen that pair with the chlorine bromine iodine, okay? So this is a very good example of uh, binary acid here. This is one hydrogen, one the other, one the other, one the other, okay? So in this case, uh, for this part of your the acid uh, chemical formula, you can say hydro. This is a hydrogen. So you can say it's hydro. 
is from hydrogen, right? And then only thing you have to do next for the, the other element is chlorine, right? So I'm gonna put chlorine here. And then I'm only going to copy the core name of the chlorine, which is the chlor. Because uh, the if you know is a sodium chloride and then you know or the potassium chloride, you only put the, this part of the core name and put ID, right? In this case, you put this is acid one, so hydrochloric acid. So we can call this hydrochloric acid. Uh, so this make this one hydro bromic acid because it's bromine okay I'm gonna change the last part as IC acid here so this is a hydro iodic acid here okay so this will be hydro fluoric acid okay <clears throat> makes sense right oh which one is the hydro no, the which or the last one H I Hydro. So I C A C I D. No, I'm talking about. No. The oh, hydro iodic acid. Iodine. Yeah, because iodine. It's so iodine. So the uh, you can also find in the periodic table anyway. Uh, so uh, wait a minute. Do you... Yeah, I think you, yeah I'll put the names on the periodic table. In the exam. So you can just use it. Uh, but make sure you guys change the last part is I C acid there. Uh, so what's what might be the name again here? This one, it would be hydro bromic acid. Perfect. Yeah. This is a bromine, right? Alrighty. So this is the first type. Okay. When it's binary. Uh, but the thing is, the if we have uh, some other type of acid here, we call oxy acids. Because this is a hydrogen plus poly atomic anion which is normally composed of numbers of oxygen so we call this oxy acid oxy means oxygen uh, so for example I can give you H and O3 okay. so this is a hydrogen and also NO3 okay. so this is actually came from two different ions this hydrogen cation and this will become anion to be NO3 minus. Okay. So, oh, this is something you cannot find on the periodic table. You need to memorize it. Um, it's just uh, no other way. You have to memorize it. So you have to memorize this name is a nitrate. Nitrate. So, no, oh, yeah, nitric acid. Perfect. Yeah, you get perfect. So this is a nitrate. Right? This is nitrate. So whenever you have a ATE name for its anion part, you can change this to IC acid. You already remember this. So it'll be nitric nitric acid. So there will be no hydro part here. When it's an oxy acid, you don't do hydro anymore. Uh, you just do find the AT name first and switch to IC acid when it's come with the uh, hydrogen so HNO3 so the name of your AT name is NO3 minus it's nitrate and whenever we have the ones in the AT name combined with the hydrogen cation become HNO3 and you do nitric acid over here. Okay. makes sense right okay let's do one more the we have a uh, this one H two SO four. Okay, so this is the two H plus because there are two hydrogen. This one has sulfur oxygen okay, and two minus. So this polyatomic anion has two, two negative charges. Uh, that's why it combines with the two cation, a hydrogen cation, not just one. So this is the name that we had for ATE. So it'll be sulfur, so it'll be sulfate. Sulfate anion. So this is sulfate uh, uh, here. And then uh, whenever you have uh, this one combined with the two hydrogen cation, so it makes the H2SO4, right? And then once again, you do the same. 
to change the AT to ICS in here. So that will become so acid. Because this is a sulfur. This S is sulfur here over there. Uh, so this is a sulfuric acid over here. Okay. Makes sense, right? Okay. So this is something you have to memorize. This is a sulfate or nitrate, phosphate, or carbonate. Uh, it's all 18 names you need to memorize. Uh, probably sometime soon, I post this the 18 names that you might need to know for the exam on Canvas. So you can take a look later. Uh, but I want to go just one more thing here. That is the, you, I said this is the sulfate. Okay. And then you have uh, another one with a uh, one less oxygen here. We call them sulfite. So we put IT instead of AT. So if you have a one that has 18 names, that has one less oxygen number than 18 name one, uh, you can name it as IT. So this is a sulfate and this is a sulfite. Okay? So if you have an 18 name, uh, you can change it to ICS here, right? So that makes this sulfate with the hydrogens then become sulfuric acid here. Uh, if you have a one has the IT name, you can change it to OUS acid there. So in this case, H2SO3 will become sulfurous acid. Sulfurous. Okay? Makes sense, right? And then uh, if you come even lower than this, even IT name, one lower numbers of oxygen than even IT name, uh, you have to do just one additional thing is the hypo. Hypo sulfurous acid. So even it's even less than OUS S. So we put hypo there. Okay? So we this name H2. SO2 will be hyposulfurous acid. Okay? When it's the just one less, it will be sulfurous acid here. When it is the one with the 18, it will be sulfuric acid here. Uh, if you have more than more, okay, it will become H2SO5. And then you have more than uh, one of the 18 names, so we put per. And then just do this one. So it's per sulfuric acid. Uh, so uh, this also goes with the other comp other acid molecules too. So the, if you just memorize memorize the AT names anion part, you automatically know the other names there. Because you know how to change them into other form of the acidic names. Put this on I think I'll yeah I'll put this on campus for sure yeah so you can definitely look at it in the one nice table yeah I normally do that on exam one study guys this will be on the campus for sure yes so let's try one more let's try one more okay so we have uh, H3PO4 okay we have H3PO4 and then uh, this is the one that has 18 names. It has negative three charge now, okay? So this is the phosphorus, so it'll be phos for, uh, this phosphate, okay, phosphate, okay? And then uh, uh, you, whenever you have uh, the, this one, you have, uh, this will be, Phosphoric acid. Okay, so we changed this one to IC acid over here. So if I change this one to PO5, what would you say? Would be per phosphoric acid. Perfect. Yes. Great. And if it's one less, be phosphite, right? Then it would be phosphorus. Yes, perfect. 
And if it's even less than, you can say hypophosphorus acetate. It's all the same. So technically, only thing you have to really memorize is the, your 18 names. Then from there, you can automatically memorize the other names as well. Over there. Okay. All right, so once again, uh, the, uh, I'll put this on the canvas anyway. Don't worry about it too much, okay? And then I'm uh, just going to go over one more thing that will be done today. So the, the one more thing is the organic compound. Okay, we have organic compounds over here. Um, if you have, uh, this one also has a different name for numbers of carbons is meth, eth, prop, but, pent, pets, pet, hmm? Or you guys use well, or you can write these down. Oh, the, this one, I think you have to memorize this. Yes, yes. The, uh, this one, because uh, you will see, this, yeah, this is something quite important. Okay, so if you have uh, those, it's quite similar to what we did for the molecular compound ones, but only difference is one to four, uh, which is uh, different, meth, eth, uh, probe, and butyl. Uh, but, but that is for organic compounds. So organic compounds are mainly made of carbon and hydrogen. Okay? So if you have a carbon and hydrogen one, uh, you're going to have uh, maybe three carbons in here. Uh, and this is the, what we call single bond. Just one pair of electrons making a one line in the Lewis structure. So this means just the one pair, two electrons in each uh, bonding. Okay. We call this covalent bond. Okay. You guys have heard covalent bond? Because this is the way they share the, the covalent uh, electrons. Uh, so carbon is group four, meaning it has four electrons here. One, two, three, four. And one from the hydrogen, so that makes two electrons making a, a shared uh, area. They can put the electron together. Uh, so we call this covalent bond. But it has the one pair of electron, we call it a single bond. If there's a two pair double bond, three pair is a triple bond. Uh, but it all has a one, 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 one pair of electron single bond together. Uh, you just need to put A and E at the end of your organic compound. So this one has three carbons. So this is a probe. And, but in all single bonds, so you'll be propane. That's it. That's propane. Okay? It's pretty easy, right? So the whenever you have a, maybe you have a okay, six. Okay? You have a six and all filled with hydrogen. Set trip with hydrogen like this. Okay, so now what might be the name? The six is a hex, and you, it's all single bond, so it'll be still A and E. So it'll be hex and A and E, so it'll be hex and perfect. Perfect. Uh, just a couple more things that we need to do. If, if you just change the, this one is one double bond, meaning now you have a two pair of electron making a one bond in here. And you only thing you have to do is change the last one as E and E. So be in this case, it will be hexene. Okay, in this case, it will be hexene. And you can do even further from removing two other hydrogen as well. So there will be triple bond now. And only thing you have to do is change the E and E to Y and E. So it will be hexene. Uh, so, if you have uh, this one, four carbons. Okay, I'm not gonna do it all the hydrogen, but make sure there's a hydrogen But If you have uh, this one, this will be, so four means but over here, so it'll be but. But there's a double one here, so it'll be, I put E and E instead of A and E, so it'll be butene. Yeah, this double one, yes, perfect. If there is a no double one, the all single one will be, 
Butane, perfect. We're done here. So uh, I'll just uh, finish here today. Okay. I think I'll just finish.